guys we've had a lot of fun today and we have another amazing session as always um let's go ahead and get that started in just a moment this is a pre-recorded session but a boy boss is going to be here at the end to answer some q a for you so heck yeah we're going to do that in just a little while um want to talk about this session really quick so email tricks how to code robust emails that convert super excited about this one got my boy basset check coming to us from robust emails he's their email designer and strategist over there super excited about this as always so if you got any questions throw them in that good old question tab all right make sure we upvote them so we can get those sorted out towards the end and uh let's go ahead and get the session playing shall we Let's get some hype going on in that chat. Let me see some reactions. Let me see some emojis. Let me hey, see some pumpkins. Thank you so much, you Thomas, guys for that introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Basit. I'm an email designer and strategist at Robust Designs. And, and today, the topic of the subject of my talk is, uh, is actually what we have been doing all these years at Robust Designs, and that is how to code robust emails that convert. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Uh, what makes an email robust? Uh, in theory, there are actually two things. One, one is unbreakable design, which, is, uh, which includes your code, your module design, uh, your support for email clients and ESPs. And the second is on-point content and placement. Um, while, while the overall design plays a vital role in bringing in conversions, the content is the real deal with this placement is all that matters. Let's look at uh, how we can create unbreakable design. Okay, so the what I mean by unbreakable design, uh, I have included a picture of Nokia 30, 3310 here. Uh, it's uh, it's like the Hilux of mobile phones. It's pretty much indestructible. I'm sure uh, many many people here who are watching this right now have have had this phone in in the past. And uh, uh, that's just what I mean by unbreakable design. Uh, it should work like a Nokia 3310. It should be pretty much indestructible. And uh, unbreakable design consists of clean code with the fallback support and uh, a design that is well adjusted for all email clients. So uh, clean code with fallback support, right? Uh, now I'm sure you all know the basics of coding HTML emails or um, these are like the, the very basics, but these are actually um, they play, all all of these things play a vital role when you're creating uh, your HTML email. Uh, okay, so okay, so the first one is uh, your email should be 600 pixels wide or less. Uh, why? Because uh, it's a safe width, uh, which all email client viewports can fit your email inside. Okay, so your uh, every email client has a viewport, and it has a certain uh, width limit that uh, if exceeded your email will break or it will uh, your the viewport just might uh, you know start deleting code to make sure that your email fits inside that viewport and we have to make sure uh, that doesn't happen so uh, 600, 600 pixels is just a safe width uh, to create your email uh, to create your email like uh, designs too uh, number two is uh, you should be using tables for everything. This is uh, this is like pretty commonly known practice, but uh, tables are the life of a robust email. Uh, they should be used for everything, but including buttons, containers, responsive con columns, uh, rows, and pretty much any anything any type of design you can uh, think of. This should be, it should be created inside a, a table or using the structure of a table. Uh, you third, you should always inline your CSS. Um, the thing with CSS in email is if you put your CSS in the head of your email, uh, it will, it will, it's, it's most, most probably it, it's guaranteed to break. Uh, most 
email clients or email service provider ESPs uh, like to delete the style tag from your header, from the header of your emails, or they like to modify it. Uh, in, if even, uh, especially when you open it in the editor of the email service provider. For example, MailChimp uh, modifies your CSS, your default CSS to cater for its editor, which has special, uh, which has some special styles. So you should always inline your CSS. Uh, like, uh, for example, if you have an image, you should uh, you should set uh, its width, uh, its height, its border, and uh, any other property that you might that you might might want to use. You should set it in line and not use uh, uh, like uh, an attribute, a CSS, at, a CSS attribute, to include it in your head and your header. Okay, so you should always be using conditional tags for Outlook. Outlook, uh, well, it's not uh, it's not so difficult to tackle Outlook if you use the conditional tags, uh, especially when you're creating. If your audience is using, uh, if your audience consists of many Outlook users, uh, you should uh, always include a special code for Outlook, and. Uh, uh, the last point here is uh, you should be validating your XML and HTML. It's often not emphasized enough on the validity of HTML and XML, while it is a major cause of broken emails. Uh, I've went through a lot of emails of my of my clients uh, who were confused with why their e email was breaking when they've designed with tables, and they've followed. Uh, every email practice uh, and yet still their email was breaking so the most common issue that i came to know was that they were using a wrong doc type or the wrong version of xml and html like in the doc types so you should be doing your research on that uh, and using the right xml and html and you should always validate your code Okay, so let's get a bit itsy bitsy advanced now. Uh, custom fonts. The they were they actually surprisingly custom fonts work very well in email. Uh, they actually work in Outlook as well. But there's a certain way you have to include include them, and that is you you'll have to use the WOF format, the dot w o f f f format. Sorry, there's the there's two ffs <laughs> format. Uh, it's pretty common. Uh, but uh, if, if you're using Google fonts for your for your fonts for for you using your fonts, uh, you can get the WOFF format uh, by using by opening your shareable link in an older browser. For example, if you have Montserrat, if you want to use Montserrat in your email, uh, you can just go select it on Google Google fonts. It will give you the newer version, which is the WFF2. Uh, Format of the of the font, uh, you you have to use W O F F, the first WOF format. Uh, the way you can do that is you you have to copy the shareable link from Google Fonts into Internet Explorer, and that will give you the font face uh, code with uh, with URL to the WOF format. Okay, so how do you put your custom fonts in your email? Uh, this it's pretty simple. It's quite simple. You just have to put them in a media query and uh, put it on the very top of your style sheet in your header. Uh, I know that most of the email clients are going to mess with it. Most email service providers are going to mess with it. But this just the, the best way, the most the safest way to use custom fonts. And I've seen it work in, uh, in like, uh, Surprisingly, it, uh, it was working in, I think, Outlook 2016. Yeah. So, OK, uh, the next thing is you should be using GIFs and JPG only for your images. Uh, why? Because uh, PNG is great. PNG works great everywhere. But uh, PNG is not a friend of your email. Uh, 
the thing is email hasn't uh, email technology or email search email rendering engines specifically outlooks rendering engines haven't changed much in the, in over the years so the safest bet is to use gif for transparent images and uh, jpgs for higher quality retina images all right line height you should be setting a line height on every table column of your email uh, line height is the setting a line height on your table column is just to make sure it doesn't exceed that uh, expected limit for its height uh, i've seen yahoo uh, or i think gmail uh, causing issues with uh, puts in uh, like random spaces so this is a way to avoid that this is a, just a way to fix that paragraph uh, especially the p tag is the, is actually not we would recommend to to use in robust emails because uh, paragraph has has actually some quite a few issues like uh, outlook has a uh, uh, i just keep on mentioning outlook is just like uh, outlook just always gets in the way but this is the way it, way it is we have to face outlook we always have to face outlook okay so outlook has a problem with paragraphs with the p tag so you should be using font the font tag uh, font tag is deprecated but deprecated on the web but it's still supporting email and i've used it in the newest email clients possible and it just it works excellent and backward support is uh, in backwards going like uh, in outlook 2007 uh, it works great as well so you should be using font instead of paragraphs and for breaks you can use br just the the traditional br tags all right so you should be a set you should be setting a minimum and maximum width on every image of your email uh why you should be do should be doing that is uh, uh just like the previous issues email service providers uh, and their editing softwares like to include uh their U ui on top of your email or inside of your email when editing so it just it sometimes breaks your images it sometimes like if you have a 200 pixel image uh, it would make it 220 pixels just to cater for his uh for his editing mode editing ui that will be appearing on that image in their editor so you should always be setting a minimum maximum width to your images uh, no matter how big or how small your images are for responsive images you can make your uh, your your normal width 100 pixels and you can set your uh, max width to whatever you wish okay so backgrounds yeah uh, background is uh, backgrounds are no longer an issue there used to be an issue uh, back in the back in the days when the with outlook yeah with outlook no surprise there so uh, but they're no longer an issue uh, you can just you can use different services to get bulletproof uh, bulletproof codes to embed in your email for uh, backgrounds. The most common service that I know of is from Com Campaign Monitor. Uh, you can go to this URL and put in your image and get a compatible bulletproof code for email. Uh, and it's just a combination of XML, some XML tags, and uh, some uh, uh, some fixes so uh, the that's just the way to go for backgrounds and they work really well uh two things to keep in mind is to or uh, you should always be keeping uh whatever the background you're setting to uh, a container you should always put it inside a diff even if even if it doesn't have any attributes and uh, uh, if you're using a vrect by XML uh, tag, uh, this is a, a tag for our Outlook to make your uh, backgrounds work in Outlook. Uh, you should be setting its height, width and height to the containers width and height. Uh, whatever the containers width and height uh, that you're setting the background to, it should be uh, it should be written in CSS in the style tag, and as well as uh, individual attributes on this uh, on this tag. Okay, so yeah, Outlook. Uh, it is your friend, yeah.
Outlook is your friend, actually. Uh, you just have to know how to uh, tackle Outlook. You just have to know how to treat Outlook. Uh, it's not so difficult to mess, uh, to you know, to get along with. Uh, it can get uh, a little uh, confusing, and uh, it uh, it can uh, you know uh, it can cause you to pull your hair at times. But uh, uh, you can tackle Outlook. It's possible. Uh, well, you just have to uh, include special code for Outlook in each of your email. Uh, so if, uh, for example, if you're designing a module, uh, for example, like you have some images in a grid, you have some images in a grid, uh, you have to, you have to make sure you make, you create the, a copy of that grid of images for Outlook as well. So you have to make uh, another copy, which will be, which will not be responsive, which will be created with Outlook styles and Outlook fixes. Uh, yeah, so you should you be using multi-conditional tags along with ex exclude code uh, for excluding code for Outlook uh, for any sort of module that you're using, and uh, only testing can tell how well it can work in Outlook. Yeah, I never, I would never recommend you to uh, just uh, you know trust yourself when uh, when creating emails for Outlook. You should always test them. There's just uh, there have been like uh, instances when we have created uh, when we we have been using bulletproof te templates for Outlook and they still tend to break just because we missed uh, missed like a colon we missed uh, uh, a quote uh, they break the whole email in Outlook so you should always be testing them before you sending send them out number two uh, which was for uh, I believe. Uh, but how to create unbreakable emails. So uh, a design that is well adjusted for all email clients. What exactly is well adjusted design? Uh, right. It is a combination of fixes for all email clients. What I mean by that is every other email client requires a special spec a specification for the email to display correctly in itself in that email client uh, for example if you're using uh, apple mail uh, apple mail has this thing has an issue where it uh, i think it scales your content by 10 times uh, right yeah it's I, I can't remember correctly yeah so apple mail for apple mail you have to include this meta tag uh, right here to fix that issue so that's just one of the spec I would say for that email client, and every email client has some sort of some sort of uh, fix, some sort of uh, uh, anything that you have to uh, anything special that you have to do to make your email work just right in that email client. So uh, a well adjusted design is a combination of fixes uh, right but the structure the the main structure which is created with HTML with so tables it should remain the same it would remain the same you don't have to create a create a totally different structure for instru uh, structure for uh, different email clients you can just create it in a table and it just goes for every every client out there you don't have to you don't ever have to change that uh, right. Um, right. So part two uh, of, our, of our creating robust emails. All right. So content, on point content and placement. Uh, Mr. Gates said in 1996, and it is 100% accurate today uh, for email that your content uh, is king. Uh, I agree with that 100%. Your content is literally all that matters. Uh, all that glittering <laughs> design, it does matter. It uh, the beautiful designs and uh, all that uh, uh, you know, all that colors, they do matter. But your content is what brings in the conversion uh, or what brings in the sale. So your content is what 
is all that matters. Uh, right. So, and you have to make sure that its placement is right as well. Uh, while the overall design plays a vital role in bringing conversions, the content is the real deal with its placement. All right. Uh, so let's look into that. All right. Uh, so how to make sure your content is on point? Um, it's quite, it's really simple. Uh, there, these are just three rules. The first rule is the most important one. Raphael Tommel, uh, a well-known designer, uh, and I'm a really big fan of his work. Uh, he, he says on the, and he says this on his web, this is the, uh, very first thing on his website when you open it refiltomil.com and it says design simple design always wins and and i can't agree with that more it, it's just true it's like uh, the, it's literally it's so true concise clean and vivid emails tend to always perform better uh if your co content if your email is cluttered it's full of uh, copy is full of paragraphs. Uh, it's, it's like uh, if you've included half a book, uh, I can't guarantee you how, uh, like if you're going to receive any reads or any conversion of those emails. So it's always better to be concise, to get straight to the point, to not waste your user's time and respect the user's time, the content, uh, the content, should always be short and sweet. All right, so uh, that's just one one part, and you have to add some boldness to your content as well. Uh, no one wants to read. The thing is, no one wants to read boring marketing emails uh, telling them to buy something. <laughs> you have to add some curiosity to to your content and make the user click. You can just uh, uh, add, uh, you can just like uh, uh, put in marketing uh, content. If you make your email concise, clean, but it's all focused on like, uh, if you're telling the user to, hey, just buy, just go ahead and buy this thing for, for us. You have to make them curious. You have to make, give some boldness to your email. You have to uh, include some excitement to your email. And that's just a way to capture your user's attention and to keep them engaged. All right, so let's look some look at some good and not so good examples of email content. Uh, this first email, the I've included the top header of a top header images image of it. Uh, it starts off uh, with this introduction. Uh, it's uh, it's in, it's like a newsletter edition. Uh, I used to receive, uh, I received this uh, about a long ago, uh, all right, but uh, this is uh, one of those emails that I never got uh, to read. I've, I've actually received, uh, uh, actually I was on their uh, marketing list for a while, for like a few months, but I never uh, read their emails because they were always so cluttered. They were always so full of paragraphs and would, it would just throw me off. Uh, I would, I was to say, yeah, I'll take out some time and read them, but uh, I never got to take take out any time to read them. So I'll do, just in the end, I unsubscribed and I never got to know what they were offering because it's just always so cluttered. Uh, and their CTA button, uh, what they were selling, they were actually selling something. Uh, it was on the bottom of this uh, email on or actually above the footer of the email um, but i don't know how many people click those ct buttons but they were uh, pretty much obscure and i never i never saw them until i i was creating uh, i was including them in this presentation uh, all right uh, let's go look at a good example of uh, of email content so this here email I received from Choir Jewelry. Uh, this is, I would say, this is the perfect example of a good content marketing email. Uh, it just makes it clear 
in the in the header of the email what they're selling what this email is about and how you can go and uh, go on about uh, you know uh, if you're interested one about uh, buying their product or looking into more of what they're what they're saying uh, it's it's concise it's clean and it's full of colors just in the header it goes on to include products uh, right below uh, below the header but uh, but the products are included in the same vivid manner and it just overall looks uh, great I, I wasn't able to include it in this presentation it's just because it was a uh, it was like uh, uh, a bit long but the thing is if this email is not wasting the user's time it gets straight to the point it continues continues on to show more products for keeping the user engaged and this is a good, good example of uh, a great email all right so uh, another example we have from warby parker and their emails are just uh, incredible I, I love their email i don't know who who designed those but they they look awesome uh, they're relevant with, with balanced balance illustrations the cta placement is just on the right spot uh, in the header and in the footer uh, they're short and they're sweet uh, no one wants to go uh, reading uh, reading books in email unless the uh, the series of emails is about books so these are marketing emails and they work really well if you keep them if you keep them short and sweet that brings us to the end of my presentation uh, to quickly recap i would like to remember you i would like to I would like you to remember all these key points. Uh, number one is to, to design unbreakable emails. Uh, you must start with a clean code and always provide fallback support. Uh, fallback support is uh, should always be testing your emails before sending them out. You should do user research. You should know uh, what, uh, what your audience is using, what email clients your audience is using. It's just good to know. If you're designing robust emails, they will be working any, anywhere. But to make sure that, uh, just to keep a peace of mind, you should be providing fallback support. Uh, all right, uh, your designs should be well adjusted. Uh, just like fallback, fallback support, your designs should be uh, tested for all email softwares, email services. And uh, this is, uh, they, they must be following the guidelines of uh, HTML emails. All right, so your content is king. Your content is uh, literally all that matters. Your design should be good as well, but your, your content uh, is what matters in, in the very end. So you should keep it short, keep it concise and vivid. Add some boldness to your content. Uh, focus on content placement as well uh, you can just put your click through uh, click to action buttons uh, in your footer in or in some obscure area of your email and expect clicks from on it uh, that's just not going to happen you have to put them in the right spot uh, in in the recent example of warby parker's email uh, they've put the a CTA in the header and uh, and just before the footer uh, those are great, great areas to put your CTS in, and it, it's unique for everyone else. So you should you should be uh, doing a bit of uh, research on where you should be putting your CTS, and uh, uh, it works well when you have pl placed them in on the right spot. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you for your interest, for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, Pathwire for this opportunity, for this awesome opportunity to speak at email camp. Uh, I'll be sticking around. If anyone has any questions, feel, please feel free to ask now and I'll do my best to answer. All right, guys, let's get Bassett in here. Let's see, he should be here in just a moment. Cool, 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 cool. Also, thank you guys for getting all those amazing questions in. All right, here he comes. Here he comes. Here comes my boy, Bassett. 
Guys, let's get some reactions in the chat tab. We got well, this is our last session of the day, last Q and A. Heck yeah, Basse, what's going on, man? I'm great. How are you? Good to see you, man. So glad you. I'm you so too. glad we got to do your your session. I'm so glad we got to do all this. I'm glad to see you again, as always. So. Yeah. Cool, cool, um, cool, cool. Let's get in some Q and A, shall we? I see you already. Actually, you started answering some yeah. questions, <laughs> but we're still gonna go over them because I want people to to be able to hear some of these answers as well. Um, guys, like I said, last call for questions. And then uh, we'll be done for uh, for today as well. Also, I wanted to drop something in before we get started with this Q and A. Um, anything for stuff related to AMP uh, for email? We will actually have an AMP session tomorrow, uh, so please, please, please uh, make sure you get to show up for that. It's gonna be pretty awesome. So, all right, man, boss, it. Let's get started here. Okay, the first one I wanted to cover is actually one that you did answer, but I want you to, just to give your reasoning and explanations behind it. This one's from Kaylin. And uh, she asked, you know, does it need to be 600 pixels wide or less? I read that 660 pixels wide is fine now. What's your reason? Yeah, uh, yeah. 660 pixels is fine as well. Uh, but 600 pixels is just uh, a safe bet. Um, you you can be like you can guarantee that it won't, won't be exceeding any viewports so you can set your actually you can actually set your email width to uh, up to 800 pixels mm -hmm. uh, but the 600 pixels is just to just for robust emails to make sure it doesn't break anywhere there you go hey and you even got to use your you even got to use the name right there that's a good, <laughs> good little little slide in <laughs> cool cool all right moving on next um how do you validate your xml slash html okay so for the right doc types and xml uh, xml versions to include in your email uh you can follow a guide like uh, from email email and asset uh, i think they posted a while ago uh, mm -hmm. about the how to create the basic structure of an email and if and they have used the right doc type uh, in that tutorial uh, I, I think i'll just include it here uh, in the chat yeah for sure uh, and so or for and for deleting your emails uh, after you've created uh, and you're finished with writing your code uh, you can use a service like uh, uh, HTML email check.com or there mm -hmm. are a few more services that you can use to validate your XML and HTML in your email. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. And then let me see. Okay, this one comes in from Kyle Bassett. Uh, he asked, uh, what is the problem Outlook has with the P tag? Okay. Uh, the P tag, the problem with P tag in Outlook is uh, uh, breaks. <clears throat> If you if you're including multiple paragraphs on top of each other, or uh, mm -hmm. if you want to add a line break in the, uh, in the, in your paragraph, uh, Outlook likes to add padding uh, that you can't remove from your paragraphs. Uh, so uh, I've seen uh, instances when uh, where someone has used multiple paragraphs, like for one for heading, one mm -hmm. for or. Uh, for like subheading and another one for uh, for description. So uh, the space between them, Outlook exceeded it uh, like ten times uh, for no reason, for no apparent reason, and there just there was just no way around it. Or they, if, even if there were some fixes, uh, <clears throat> there there's just not worth it to include uh, uh, so many fixes just to fix that one little uh, issue. So mm -hmm. uh, it's your safest bet to use font uh, for paragraphs in your email or for headings or anything, any, any typography, any sort of typography. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, let me see here. And then moving on here from Kaylin as well. Uh, will using font instead of uh, P tag create accessibility problems? Uh, actually, this just one of the issues with fonts. Yes, it would create ex accessibility problems. And mm -hmm. I agree with that. Uh, but this is one of the sacrifices we have to make when creating robust emails. Mm -hmm. uh, P tag is uh, for, is recommended for uh, accessible emails. Uh, I'm not sure about font. Uh, we haven't really tested them with uh, accessible options. But mm -hmm. Yeah. I think in that case, if you're if you're creating accessible emails, uh, I would advise you to use the p tag instead of font. Gotcha. Okay. 
And this one comes in from Katie. Um, she had she asked, uh, "Are there any tips for subject lines? Is A/B test a must do? Emojis? Thanks, great stuff." Um, uh, A/B test. I'm not sure about A/B. Yeah, there. Uh, some for some companies, the for some audiences, yeah, the, I would. It just depends on depends on your audiences. Uh, if your audiences are divided. Uh, upon many different email clients uh, and many different platforms, uh, A/B tests are great to get to know uh, more of your email, like uh, email spectrums. But but uh, it just totally depends on your audience. Uh, and for emojis, uh, I wouldn't really. Emojis are great, but uh, I wouldn't really recommend them to use in your robust emails if you want them to look good uh, they tend to break and when they break uh, it's sort of like uh, like a broken uh, i would say uh, some sort of broken code appears in the in place of the, the emojis so mm -hmm. actually Cla clavio doesn't let you include any emojis there and that's just one of their reasons because they tend to break ah okay there you go there you go okay uh all right man this is our last one for today uh this one comes in from adam um i didn't this i like this question because it, you know you talked about it very much in your, in your presentation about layouts but he asked yeah. you know how can you spot a good layout uh a good layout as in uh, a design a good design or yeah, a good design a good design it just if if it's not cluttered if it's uh, if it's easy to understand, uh, if it's if it gives you its message uh, right when you open it up, so, and uh, it's it's not uh, confusing you in any sort of way, mm -hmm. uh, I would say that that's a good layout. That's a good design. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and and Adam did clarify. Yes, a good design. So yes. cool, cool, awesome, awesome guys. Well, boss it. Man, thank you so much. Thank you for stopping by to do some Q&A with us. Thank you thank for doing you. your session. Hopefully in the thank future you get to do too. something Thanks. again. Yes. Yeah, man. Guys, let's get for some sure, reactions. Sure, yeah, thank let's so get much. some reactions in the in the chat tab, y'all, for, for Bossit and his presentation. Bossit, man, thank you so much for being here. And uh, I hope to see you soon again, my friend, all right? Thank you. You too. All right, see you.